Hello and welcome to lesson two of key question five, keeping up morale, the depression war and recovery, 1930 to 1951. Today, we're going to be looking at propaganda posters and censorship. So we're going to be looking at how propagandas were used to try and encourage people during the First World War to keep, the Second World War, sorry, to keep morale up and how things were censored as well, how things were keep, kept hidden away from the people on the home front just to make sure that their spirits were kept high. OK, so. First things first, what we're going to be looking at is these posters. I want you to have a think about what messages these propaganda posters are trying to convey. So have a look here. We've got careless talk costs lives. Mr. Hitler wants to know. Leave Hitler to me, Sonny. You ought to be out of London. What kinds of things, you know, this, this soldier talking to a small boy, what kinds of things do you think these are trying to portray? What are they trying to do? So pause the video, have a little think. So hopefully you've done that now. Now, as you can probably see, they've each got different messages. They're trying to convince people to do things. OK, they're trying to convince people that these things are the right things to do. So don't talk about things you think might put Britain at risk. OK, careless talk costs lives. He wants to know the unit's name. Where is it going? Whence it came, ships, guns, shells and make him curious. But silence make him simply furious. And you can see how they played on the furor um, word there. If you get a letter from your husband who's out in the front who you know where he is, don't say things like that because you don't know who's listening, you don't know where they're going, you don't know, keep secrets, okay, that kind of thing. Leave Hitler to me, Sonny, you ought to be out of London. I don't know if you've guessed, you probably have. This is about evacuation, trying to make sure that we can get children out of London um, so that they're safer. You leave Hitler to me, I can deal with it. You go out to the countryside where you'll be safer, okay? And these are the kinds of things that we, that we saw a lot of during World War II. Propaganda posters um, came out in the droves. There was, there was, Thousands of them during World War II, all quite interesting, all with different messages. So the government were aware that people had to support the war at all costs. It was hoped that by constant persuasion and suggestion, people's attitudes would be positively influenced. The government tried to achieve these aims by means of propaganda. So you should have a propaganda poster um, sheet with this. And I want you to look at them all and I want you to tell me what you think they're saying. So there's about nine different propaganda posters and I want you to underneath them all, stick it in your book and write down what messages the poster is trying to portray. So I suggest that you pause the video and do that now. So hopefully you've done that now. You've seen messages from all kinds of different things, from Dig for Victory, the Spitfire campaign, careless talk costs lives, all that kind of thing. So censorship. So the government wanted to ensure that information would not be given away to the enemy or given to the British people um, so that it might damage morale. This meant in introducing censorship. There was censorship in overseas mail and government examined all letters going abroad. If there was any sensitive material in the letter, it was returned to send or it was blacked out. Um, soldiers who sent their letters home were subject to uh, censorship to ensure that military secrets aren't given away. Bone calls are listened to. Even Winston Churchill and the King, when they were having conversations on the phone about the war, had to have their conversations listened to. Certain of the items on the news weren't broadcast or published because they thought they might damage morale. Newspapers are carefully monitored. There was only actually one case of closing down the press in January 1941, which was a communist newspaper. The Daily Worker um, was shut down for supporting Joseph Stalin and attacking the government. Um, on the whole, uh, the British media got on board because they wanted to help win the war. Um, but the really important thing when you're looking at the significance of this is that there were many defeats that occurred in the early years of the war that were hidden from the British public that they didn't know what was going on. For instance, Dunkirk, um, which we look at later on with Winston Churchill. There's two sides to, to Dunkirk. I don't know if any of you have seen the film or done any reading about it, but basically um, the British army at the, quite near the start of the war was stranded on the beaches with an advancing German army and there was a ma France had been occupied. Britain were completely on their own. Um, there was a massive um, effort to try and get these soldiers off the beaches and back home. Now, there is one side of it that is like the Dunkirk spirit. Um, all these little ships went out to save all these men. Winston Churchill managed to get these boys home. It was a massive success. And there's the other side to it that was actually lots of people died of starvation. Lots of people died um, of, of lack of hydration. They were sort of left. Um, there, there's pictures of Dunkirk that weren't actually shown in Britain of, of sort of um, people dying and um, marooned ships and all that kind of thing and, and, and the dreadfulness of it all so that was hidden okay, so pieces of information like that were, were hidden from the British public because they didn't want the people in Britain to not think it was worth it they needed them to keep going they needed them to keep working to make sure that the war effort was totally and utterly thrown um, into winning the war okay so that's what censorship is so what I want you to do is describe censorship for me do a paragraph for me take the information there and describe to me what censorship 
um, meant in World War II. So I'm going to suggest that you pause the video and do that for me now. So hopefully you've done that now. And what I want you to do now is you should have a sheet of paper attached to this lesson that, look, that looks like this. I want you to either cut it out or colour it in or whatever's easiest for you. If you can't print it, then just put highlight it um, on the Word document. Um, cut out the different ways the government use censorship. Put them in order of effectiveness. So perhaps you could just put one, two, three, if, if, if that's what you need to do, if you can't print it out. Um, and then I want you to think about one more way the government could have censored information. So put these in order. So you've got certain pieces of news were not broadcast because the Ministry of Information thought they would damage morale. For instance, the government covered up reports of ships sunk by Japanese kamikaze pilots. Certain photos were banned, for instance, those showing dead children, one of a bomb which had broken through into an underground sta integrant station. Communist newspaper was banned, as we've looked up, because it opposed the war. Soldiers' letters were censored um, to delete all mention of times and places. And early in the war, the Ministry of Information kept the invention of the radar secret instead. It said that RAF pilots had been eating carrots and could see in the dark. OK, so... I want you to think about that now and put them in order of effectiveness and then you can perhaps, perhaps think of one of your own and add it in as well. So again, I'm going to suggest that you pause the video and do that now. So hopefully you've done that now for me and you put them in order. So the Ministry of Information, I want you to explain the role, once we've gone through this now, explain the role of the Ministry of Information. So in order to make sure that propaganda and censorship were carried out effectively, the Ministry of Information was set up within hours of the outbreak of war. It had 3,000 people working at it. Um, and at first, it wasn't actually that successful. A lot of its poster campaigns failed to win much support, but it did become a lot more successful after that. And the aim of its poster campaign was to encourage support for the war, sell ideas, convince people to act and think in a particular way, appeal to people's sense of patriotism for the love of their country, and educate people about key issues during the war as well. So I want you to explain the role of the Ministry of Information for me. Again, pause the video and come back to me. So overall, I want you to think about how effective propaganda and censorship were. So give me a paragraph now for your plenary. How effective do you think propaganda and censorship were in keeping morale up? Do you think they were good at keeping morale? Do you think that censorship, um, do you think that people actually did know what was going on or they were completely convinced? You can use BBC Bite Size and some of your own, some of your own research for this if you like as well, or you can just use what we've done today. It's totally up to you. But once you've done that, we are done. Well done. Thank you very much.